Okay, in this video I'm going to be talking about and attempting to play some reggae guitar. And reggae is a style of music that I love, I enjoy listening to, but it's not something that I've ever really properly explored as a guitar player. And when I have attempted to play reggae in the past, it's generally been that horribly inauthentic cold reggae kind of thing which uh, nobody wants to listen to I don't think. Now the reason I've decided to include this as part of my Adrian Attempts series is that I feel totally unqualified to be talking about and playing reggae music and that's the point of this series. I'm going to be getting outside of my comfort zone, I'm going to be exploring artists and styles that I'm unfamiliar with and along the way I'm probably going to be making lots of mistakes and getting stuff wrong. Now in preparation for making this video I've been listening to a lot of reggae music, been trying to find out as much as I can about reggae guitar and I hope this video is going to be a modest exploration of reggae guitar and I hope that it serves as a, an introduction to those of you who are unfamiliar with the style and maybe be a bit of inspiration for some of you to explore the style a bit more deeply. Now one of the things about reggae is once you really start listening to it and getting into the style of music you realise there's a lot more going on than you might have initially assumed and I think for many people reggae is perceived as being quite a simple thing certainly in guitar terms it's generally thought that it's just this kind of There you go, reggae guitar. But uh, it's not quite as simple as that. In fact, it's a much more complex and varied style, and it's not just this monolithic thing either. There's a whole world to be found in this music, and there's so much great music out there to be found lots of sub genres, lots of subtleties. And I think my own way into reggae was actually through punk, and a lot of punk bands in the 70s were influenced by reggae, particularly The Clash, I think, and uh, bands like The Ruts as well, who I did a, a video on recently, who had a very big reggae influence in their music. Now, I'm not a music historian. I'm not going to go very deeply into the whole evolution of reggae music, which is actually quite a complicated thing. But what I want to talk about in this video is the classic 70s reggae sound. And uh, the date often given for the start of reggae music is 1968. And reggae itself evolved out of earlier Jamaican musical forms, so ska and then rock steady. And there was also a big influence of American music as well, so American soul, R&B. But I want to get playing some guitar. And my starting point when trying to play reggae guitar has just been listening to a lot of the classic artists and tracks. I've been watching some live footage to see if I can get any pointers for the kind of techniques they're using. And I also think I've watched just about every YouTube reggae guitar tutorial out there, some of which were really great, some of which were not so great. So I think the defining characteristic of reggae guitar are these staccato upbeat accents that you hear in just about every reggae tune and I did that just now in this terribly inauthentic kind of a way but let's try and get to the bottom of exactly how this should be done and there's nothing particularly technical going on here but it is actually quite hard to do in an authentic way and it's all about getting the right touch and the right kind of feel and I want to talk first of all about where we're going to place these accents rhythmically speaking and perhaps the best starting point would be to start with the drums and just to listen to a typical reggae drum group because in reggae music really the guitar is just a supporting instrument it's really all about the drums and the bass so a typical reggae drum pattern might sound something like this and this is something known as a one drop groove a one drop drum pattern. Uh, one drop I think either because you're dropping beat one, you're not emphasizing the first beat of the bar, or perhaps because it's got the drop of the kick drum on beat three. I'm not exactly sure why it's got that precise terminology, but that's, that's the name for that kind of classic reggae drum pattern. And uh, there are a couple of ways to feel this. I mean, for me, it's got quite a half time kind of a feel. So it's one, two, three, four that kind of feel but you could count it twice as fast as that one two three four one two three it doesn't particularly matter how you count it ultimately it's more about you know, feeling the groove and feeling the rhythm rather than kind of analyzing it in a theoretical kind of a way and the guitar is just going to fit in around that pattern playing these kind of upbeat patterns and depending on how you count that drum pattern the guitar is either going to fall on the ands or on beats two and four so if you're counting it in a slightly faster kind of way it's going to be one two three four one two three four two and four is where you're going to be placing those guitar accents or if you're feeling it in half time it's going to be one and two and three and four and so uh, amounts to exactly the same thing in terms of how it sounds it's just a, a difference of how you're feeling that and how you're counting it so let's take this onto the guitar I'll show you how it works with some chords and some chord progressions 
and this kind of guitar part is often referred to as the skank or I've also heard it referred to as the chop or a bang I'm not sure if there's any agreed terminology on this but I'm going to call it the chop or the skank in this video I think and uh, the two key things to remember when playing this part are you want to play with down strokes and you want to keep those chords staccato so it's going to involve some muting with your fretting hand and perhaps with your strumming hand as well. And let's start with the strumming. As I said, almost all of the authentic reggae guitar players that I've, I've seen and heard do this will play with a downstroke. And I'm not sort of giving out rules here. There are probably going to be some exceptions to that, but nearly always it's going to sound best if you play with a downstroke. And uh, you know, it's the opposite of what a lot of people think when they start playing reggae. You think an upbeat, play it with an upstrum, but uh, most of the, the great reggae guitar players are going to play this kind of rhythm with a downstroke. So let's just get that rhythm happening, maybe on one chord. Let's just take an A bar chord here and just get that upbeat thing happening. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got those accents happening on the and, playing with nice, assured, kind of definite downstrokes. And to keep those chords staccato, we're just going to be releasing pressure with the fretting hand. So one, two, three, four. And in terms of the strumming, I'm trying to give it a nice even strum across all six strings. And you also want to get the timing nice and relaxed. So you want that accent to fall right on the beat, right on that and, or even a little bit behind the beat is sometimes good with reggae guitar. So you're just sounding a bit more relaxed. So you certainly don't want to tense up and start rushing this kind of thing. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the other key thing here is the muting with the left hand. And you want to keep these chords quite short and uh, if you listen to reggae recordings you'll hear that um, the amount of muting kind of varies from player to player. I mean some players sort of keep the chords really staccato and really percussive, other players let a little bit more of the note through but you certainly don't want it to sound like this. Okay, there I am releasing pressure but uh, I'm squeezing the chord down for too long you don't really get that staccato effect so what you want to do is just press down that chord and as soon as you've pressed down just release pressure to get that staccato sound and it's really up to you to experiment with how much of the note you let through and it can go from something like that you could take it even more staccato where you're barely pressing down at all. I think a lot of players will kind of squeeze down the chord, but they're not even going to be touching the fret wire as they squeeze down. And then you get more of a percussive sound. But there's not much harmonic information left in the chord, so that would sound a bit more like this. And So you can just about hear that that's an A chord, but I'm not even touching the fret wire there. I'm just squeezing very lightly and then immediately releasing. And then you get that really nice kind of quacky percussive sound. So let's add in another chord just to give this a bit more movement and then see how this guitar feel fits in with that one drop drum groove. And I'm just going to play a G going to an A minor, that's a very typical reggae sound. I think a lot of reggae chord patterns are quite simple. They're either just two chord cycles or four chord cycles. And this G to A minor, you hear it in the tune, Police and Thieves, a very well-known reggae track. I first came across it through the Clash's cover version, but originally by someone called Junior Mervyn. And I'm just gonna be concentrating on my placement of those accents. And I also might just play around with the amount of muting I'm going to use. So listen out for that. Sometimes I'll let a bit more of the note through and sometimes it's just going to be very percussive. So this really is the basis of so many reggae guitar parts and it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that and the difficult thing is just to work on that feel and just get it feeling and sounding just right. Let's just have one more example. Maybe we'll go to a minor key and have A minor 
E minor, D minor, and A minor. So one, four, five in A minor, similar to Disco Devil, that great Lee Scratch Perry track. Another really good example of this is the Bob Marley track Jammin and the guitar part on that has got these really strong accents and it's very very percussive you can hardly hear what chords he's playing on the guitar you can infer what he's playing through the, the bass and what the rest of the band are doing but um, what I think he's doing is this we've kind of got a B minor and Bob Marley tends to play a lot of chords just on the top four strings like that kind of thing for a B minor so B minor going to a E9 and then a G and an F sharp minor and that's the, the basis of the, the verse pattern in jamming so Now another very common thing to do is to add in an extra up strum and then we've got what might be referred to as a double chop or a double skank and this is something you would have heard in thousands of tunes, it's this kind of thing. So very very common thing to do. The, the principles of this are exactly the same, the downstroke is still falling in the same place on the and but we're just coming back up again with the pick and you still want this to sound nice and percussive so you're going to need good fretting and muting here. And there are loads of examples of this and the first one that springs to mind, uh, an example that most of you will probably know, is Stir It Up by Bob Marley and that's just based on a simple 1-4-5 progression, I think it's in A, so we've got A and then D and then E like this, so you can play A bar chord like that or Bob Marley might, might play it like that I think, and then it's this A shape D chord and E chord, so we've got And one thing you can do with this part is to add a little bit of swing and depending on the, the feel then there might be no swing at all, there might be lots of swing or it might be somewhere in between where you're just kind of giving a hint of swing and this is another one of those mysterious kind of feel things that you're just going to need to play around with uh, until it feels right. But if I played those same chords with a bit of swing it would sound like this. So I'm just going to try this with a bass and drums groove. Let's do it with a G chord going to an F chord. I'm going for a, a bit of a kind of legalise it by Peter Tosh kind of feeling on this one. So that would sound like this. important feature of reggae guitar is this single note muted kind of part that you hear on a lot of recordings and very often if a band has got two guitar players one guitar player is going to be playing that offbeat skank kind of a part and the other guitar player is going to be playing some kind of muted part and very often this is just doubling the bass line so reinforcing the bass line and sometimes it's a little bit freer than that so it's doubling the bass line but departing from it in certain places and then other times it's a completely independent part and a really clear example of this kind of part is again from the Bob Marley song Stir It Up and the guitar is just doubling the bass line and it's playing this kind of arpeggiated part so if you remember the chords to that song are just A, D and E so 1, 4, 5 in the key of A and the bass line and this muted guitar part are playing this <laughs> Thank you. 
So really this is just arpeggiating those basic chord changes. So the, the basic idea is just the root third and the fifth of each chord. So for the, the one chord you've got A, C sharp and E, then for the four chord D, F sharp and A, and the five chord is E, G sharp and B. So and in fact on the one chord you're just playing the, the fourth there and not the fifth and then change to the D chord, just straight up that arpeggio. And the same thing with the five chord. So a very clear example of this kind of muted part. Another example of this kind of part, again sticking with Bob Marley, would be Could You Be Loved? And that's a muted part which doesn't follow the bass line. It's an independent part. And that goes something like this. We've got... something like that. It's really just outlining the chord changes once again. So we've got you know, B minor, it's playing notes from that chord really. So it's the root, the second, then we've got the flat third. Just going to the root of a G chord and then we've got a D chord. Just got the root, the second and the third. So just outlining the harmony with these muted single note kind of parts. So the offbeat staccato thing, the muted lines, that's really the essence of reggae guitar. But one thing that I've not mentioned yet are the embellishments that you can bring to these kind of parts. This is where you have to bring your own taste to bear as well. I mean, you don't want to overdo this kind of thing or it will just detract from the groove. Very often the best thing to do is just to keep things dead simple, not to do any embellishments or any fills. That's what's happening on a lot of these classic reggae records. But then certain guitar players will get a little more a little bit more uh, inventive and uh, often a lot of the ideas that are going on here seem to have been kind of imported from American soul, R&B and blues. You do hear quite a lot of that kind of vocabulary on reggae records. So I'm just going to give you a few examples of that kind of thing that you might like to play around with. So I'm going to go back to our G to A minor or A minor 7 chord progression and a simple embellishment might just be to approach each of these chords by one fret below just to add in a bit of variation so so I think I'm coming in there with the slide on the end of four one two and three and four something like that. You don't want to do it every time like that. I'm just doing that as an example, but occasionally just throwing that in can add a bit of light and shade and a bit of variety. You could try adding in some extra notes to some of these chords. So with a G chord, for example, you could try adding in the sixth or the ninth. So just uh, using my little finger there to play this E or, or to play this high A. The same thing with the A minor chord. You could add in the the ninth on top or, or perhaps the sixth or maybe the seventh would be better on a minor chord so just reaching up for this kind of G note so you could have this kind of thing maybe have some soul or R&B sixths connecting these two chords together so these kind of shapes Maybe try some single notes connecting the chords. You know, from a pentatonic scale, that might sound good. So. And I might just try a few of those examples along with the bass and drums groove as well.
so I hope I've given you a few ideas there but the best thing to do is just to listen to a lot of classic records and also just to experiment and get a feel for what works and what doesn't. Perhaps a quick word about the gear that I'm using to make this video and about reggae gear in general and perhaps a short answer to the question uh, what gear do I need to play reggae music is it doesn't matter in the slightest. I mean if you look at the gear that the the classic sort of reggae artists used it was all kinds of stuff it was really just whatever they had at their disposal and it worked and it sounded good and Bob Marley for example used various different guitars throughout his career I've seen him with a Strat um, he was famous for using I think a Les Paul Special with two P90s so today I've chosen to use my Trent Model 1 which has got two P90s I think that Bob Marley tended to use the middle position so that's what I'm doing here today that seems to get a good kind of quack for that skank part and then as far as amplification I'm just going straight into my Fender Princeton clean sound a little bit of reverb I don't think you need anything fancy for a reggae sound it's just a nice balanced clean sound um, maybe a touch of reverb and I don't think you really need much in the way of effects for reggae stuff I mean yes you do hear effects on reggae recordings sometimes they might be guitar pedals more often than not though they're production effects kind of you know, things that uh, Lee Scratch Perry for example would do these kind of dub effects with delay but uh, today I'm just using one effects pedal and that's a phase 19 you do hear some kind of phasey sound on some of the Bob Marley recording I'm not sure exactly how that was achieved whether it was a phase 90 it does sound like a phase 90 or whether it was some kind of envelope filter or a, a Mutron phaser, I've got no idea, but a phase 90 certainly works well for reggae and does give you that extra kind of quacky sound. So that's about it for this video. It is an Adrian Attempts video, so my own reggae playing is very much a work in progress, but I hope you found some useful ideas and techniques in this video. I hope it inspires you to explore reggae guitar a little bit further. If you would like tab and backing tracks, then that's all going to be up on my Patreon page. Pay what you like to get access to those. And do let me know if you've got any other ideas for Adrian Attempts videos, whether it's styles of music or artists or songs that you think I should look at. Those suggestions will be um, very gratefully received. So just let me know in the comments about that. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.